you know, working with the city, when we're looking at, um, you know, bringing in new technologies, you know, one of the biggest things I, I touch a lot about is the fact is that city networks are messy. Okay, they're not, they're not, you know, a, like what you would think would be a standard network comes out of the box, everything's connected. You know, city networks grow over decades. And so they tend to have not one network, but multiple networks. Like the city of San Diego, we have 24 networks and we still keep finding things. You know, and it's just that because they grow over time and new technologies get added to it. And, you know, some of the biggest threats that we deal with and some of the things that I'm really concerned about are the fact that because of these disparate technologies, when you bring in some of these these newer type of technologies that you're starting that we're starting to see with new types of protocols and new types of rich data, you don't know the impacts of what these technologies are going to do with the current services you're providing the citizens. You know, when you update them, or is there going to be residual cascading effects? You know, um, are there, is there going to be things that are going to crash? You know, when you're doing standard security, you know, you have standard security processes in place. How are these new technologies going to be, you know, are going to act or are they going to work with, you know, what you already have in play? And we found that it's hit and miss, you know, um, you know, some of them will shut down. Some of them will shut other things down. <laughs> some of them, um, you know, with some of my security tools, don't know what smart street lights are supposed to look like. You know, so they have no clue. You know, I mean, some of them, you know, like the Nest thermostats, when we're running security scans, they were seeing Nest thermostats as Raspberry Pis. So I'm seeing Raspberry Pis in all of my fire stations, and I'm like, no, no you know, the firefighters don't have Raspberry Pis. Oh, you yeah. Saw Nest. Yeah, but it, but it was Nest uh, thermostats. You know, so a lot of times you end up having to go out and figure out, okay, what the hell are we actually seeing? And then, you know, you realize what it is. You know, um, and then the, the next thing that starts clicking in my head is, all right, how are we maintaining this? You know, when they purchased these things and installed them, did anybody have a maintenance plan for this? And, you know, how are we going to do the updates? You know, how are we going to roll this into our, our, our maintenance plan and our update plan and our change management plans? You know, and so uh, this, you know, it starts... All of a sudden, exponentially, you start having all these questions about it. how are we going to maintain this stuff long term? You know, because city networks, you know, we use technology; they don't get rid of it. You know, they just don't rip and replace; they keep things forever. You know, and so you start looking at uh, you know these new technologies that we're incorporating and these new sensors and things that they want to use. And I start thinking long term wise, you know, in our five year strategy, you know, are these things going to be viable five years from now? You know, and if so, I mean, how you know, how flexible are they going to be as we move into the software defined networks and we start doing micro segmentation and start doing all this virtualization stuff? Is it going to be flexible enough for it? The thing about it is, is, you know, people when they think about San Diego, they don't really, you know, San Diego is the eighth largest city in the nation. Okay, we have one and a half million citizens in the city proper, we have almost three million in the county. You know, when you think of San Diego, people think of like, hey, it's a good tourist spot. They don't realize San Diego has the, li has the largest cluster of biotech companies in the nation. You know, it's a huge biotech research facility. You know, I mean, huge. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of them. Um, there's an extensive uh, startup community for cybersecurity and for drones. There's a huge DOD presence and a DOD research facilities there. Um, there's major facilities there for telecommunications and for chip design. Um, you know, a ton of different banks and stuff have located there. The, uh, you know, there's multiple, there's about, we were actually talking about, there's about six or seven clusters of different types of, you know, verticals that are there, plus research universities, you know, with UCSD and San Diego State and University of San Diego. I mean, you know, four, about four years ago, there was only one college that was offering master's degrees in cyber. Now there's six colleges there that are offering master's degrees in cyber. You know, it's a, uh, you know, I said, you know, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's a, um, from a technology perspective, it's a, it's, it is a very big target. I mean, the city averages about a million attacks per day on our networks. The whole thing about, about CISOs and collaboration, one of the things I have learned as a CISO is that you can never learn everything. You know, the threat space we're in, the, just the acceleration of technology is phenomenal, you know, especially in the IoT space. You know, and one of the first things you've got to realize if you're a CISO is that just 
I'm not going to know. <laughs> you know. Just understand, I'm not going to know everything. You're going to have to ask for help. You're going to have to be comfortable with collaborating and being able to bring people in you know, and be good at being able to take risk and speak at it in business terms. You know, with people that are non-technical, you know, to be able to go ahead and evangelize cybersecurity and its business value, so you can get your stakeholders, you know, to go ahead and partner with you, you know. Um, and I can tell you, like in San Diego, we actually have a CISO roundtable. It's about 11 years old. It was, it was actually started by the FBI and like six CISOs. Now um, there's about 130 CISOs that are members of it. And we meet every other month behind closed doors. We have dinner together. We talk about issues. We help each other. We collaborate. Um, the cyber community in San Diego is very close-knit. I mean, if you don't collaborate and work with your fellow CISOs, you, know, you are you know, you might as well be cutting off a limb because it's like you are missing a major asset that's there for you to help you, you know, and, and we, we, we expect to work with each other. One of the rules is that if you're a vendor coming in to sell something, you know, to go ahead and talk to me about a technology, don't spend your whole time telling me how the other guys are bad. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> I brought you there because I want to hear about you. Are you going to go ahead and fit an issue that I have? I've, all, I've done an assessment. I've got a security gap. I've got a control that I need to fix. And I need to know, are you going to be able to help me with that? I don't care about your, you know, your competition. I want to talk to you. You know, um, another big thing for me is that I don't look at technologies. I look at partnerships. When I go ahead and I work with vendors, I'm looking at people that are there long term. You know, I just don't buy a one-off. I tend to buy platforms. I tend to buy a solution that will help me with multiple security gaps that I have that's flexible, that will grow with my organization, and I want a partnership. I want to go ahead and work with you. I'll do case studies. I'll do white papers with you, but I expect, obviously, a discount, you know, cost-wise, because I'm a city. I don't have a lot of money, you know, so we can work out that partnership, but I'm looking at the fact that we are we got a long-term relationship. You know, if I only see you once a year and, it's, and if that's for when it's renewal time, um, don't expect me to renew with you. you know, my team is going to be active working with your teams. We're going to be giving you recommendations on changes and things that you can do better or things that we would like to see. We expect a partnership. Not really. I mean, the biggest thing for us, though, is that you know, by municipal code, our data has to stay inside the United States. And so that does get a little tricky if you're dealing with, um, you know, companies that are outside the United States, you know, uh, just because of the fact that, you know, our data has to stay in the continental U.S. With that said, I mean, you know, I've done work with uh, companies from Tel Aviv, with companies from Quebec, you know, with companies from the EU. You know, I mean, I've gone ahead and I've, I've worked with companies and stuff like that. It's just that um, a lot of times they'll have an office here you know, in the United States somewhere. And so that's how we kind of do work through. But the biggest thing is, you know, we have to follow that, you know, that municipal code that we have to keep data in the U.S. But otherwise than that, I mean, it's pretty much wide open. I decided to attend the Smart City Summit because of the fact that what I'm seeing is right now the city is moving more and more into using technologies, into using um, you know, uh, everything from sensors and looking at drones and looking at new ways to be able to provide services. I mean, when you look at the ISO 37150 and 151 frameworks for how cities are supposed to become smart cities, you know, and, you know, I'm the CISO for the eighth largest city in the nation, and I'm looking at within the next 20 years, our population is probably going to double. How are we going to be able to provide services for them? And the thing about it is, is cities... We just can't rip and replace technologies. A lot of times when you're looking at putting in major infrastructure, you know, use of technologies for citizens, some of these projects are going to take decades. You've got to put these things in planning now, you know, for some of the things, if you, especially if you want these technologies to be resilient enough. And so my, th you know, one of the big things I was looking at coming here was being able to speak with other cities, seeing what they're doing, 
um, being able to speak with some of the providers, seeing you know what what they're looking at, you know what kind of projects they're working on, um, because we're already you know like I said you know we're already actively involved in the space, and we're already looking at what kind of new technologies we're going to be using. I mean I've got everything from golf courses to libraries to HVAC systems, police cars, all kinds of stuff that's on our networks, and so I'm just I'm looking at more intelligent uses of technology, new data sets, new protocols. And that's why I came here, because I want to go ahead and see what everybody else is doing.